Alison Spill is a hugely popular comedian who's been growing in force with each piece of work she puts out. Having starred in and created her own RT series, Nowhere Fast, she also hosts her own podcast, The Alison Spill Show. In late January, she starts a nationwide tour that includes a date in Dublin's Vicar Street on March 30th. I'm Mike Sheridan, and this is The Delve. Alison Spittle, Hi. thanks so much for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I love the name of the new, it's not as special, it's a new stand-up, I suppose, hour, isn't it? Yeah, Alison yeah. Alison Spittle makes a show of herself. Yeah, I was <laughs> trying to come up with a name and uh, that one just popped into my head and I thought, sure, I make a show of myself all the time anyway, <laughs> so why not get paid for it? Uh, so <laughs> and it's, it's almost that um, self-effacing humour, obviously, as well. And is that, is yeah. that what the show was like? How long, how long is the show, first of all? Uh, it'd be about an hour. Like, um, normally, um, I'll be doing Edinburgh each year, so you have to come up with an hour of material there. And I have kind of like a different show for Ireland that I would have for Edinburgh. So, um, yeah, normally about an hour. And they kind of, I'm at the moment writing away so I'm excited. So, so is it, it's a bit you kind of giving yourself a deadline then as well, where you're like, okay, I need to have. Yeah, and that's a it's it's like a big leave insert deadline. Yeah, so it's a thousand people. <laughs> so. well, yeah, exactly. Give yourself the fear a little bit as yeah, well. Yeah, like. totally. That's the only way I work is through uh, great pressure. Do you, yeah. do you ever feel like you go through the material? A little bit quicker, depending on where you are. Like, so I know you're doing Dolans and stuff in Limerick as well. Like, it's a whole tour. Yeah, yeah. And, like, depending on how the audience are going to react, are you like, right, you've got your killers that you know are going to land? Yeah, it depends. It's like, uh, so if I'm going to different towns, like, I have experiences of different towns. So I'll, I'll often do a story about the local town itself. Or sometimes what happens is either I get like nicely heckled by my family, like at Vicar Street last year that happened, <laughs> or, uh, or I end up heckling myself almost. Sometimes a thought will come into my head and I'll say it out. And uh, yeah, I kind of, I like to have my bits done, but I also like to be a bit loose as well, because um, that's the type of comedy that I like. And, you know, and sometimes I try and repeat the same joke that I that I said on stage a day before and it never goes well. So, really? yeah, it depends. It depends. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Because some comedians kind of like like yourself, they kind of thrive on that when it's in the moment and you get yeah. a laugh in the moment. Because that's the whole that's the whole joy of stand up comedy as well. It's like it's live. You're, you're going there as an audience member to to see what happens that night, you know, so you need to have that element there. Or maybe I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it obviously works for you, right? Because it's almost like improvisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Like, I do have my bits, though, that I keep to. Um, but sometimes, you know, you can add on bits as well to, to the bits you already have. Like, I feel like I'm always writing my jokes. Like, I, I did a show in London there a week ago. What was the bit? I do this bit about getting punched in the face. And uh, and I finally uh, found a pun involving like because I get punched and I get brought into Supermax, which is like the nearest local hospital in my <laughs> local area. And uh, I said, "Oh, Alison, you're ever getting a mighty box in the face there?" <laughs> and I was like, "Mighty box? That's a meal. You should have done this months ago, Alison. What are you at?" So yeah, I'm always kind of rewriting and stuff. Yeah, it sounds very grim actually. The, <laughs> the bit of material I gave you there. <laughs> Oh, well, that's, I think that's Irish humour, isn't it? Ah, yeah. Yeah, like most of the, like, the, the biggest laughs I have are like at funerals and stuff. And the closer the loved one, the bigger the laugh. Because the bigger the... <laughs> that sounds, that's a horrible thing to say. But it's the pressure. It's the releasing of pressure. And it's kind of like my family just joke with each other all the time. And um, like even when I, I do material about like having mental breakdowns or or funerals and stuff like that. And they're pretty dark places but you know there is something funny about punching a potato into the floor for no reason you, know? <laughs> you have to laugh at it some point so. I think it's one of laugh. those things all right where, where people think it you know people think the darkest thing they can possibly think but would never say it yeah so yeah, when yeah. somebody says it on stage it's instantly relatable yeah and it's kind of like a, a release of pressure as well and like the biggest kind of uh, feedback I get is that, oh, sure, I had a mental breakdown. I did worse, you know, and then they'll tell you about their story. It's like an AA meeting where everybody's yeah. kind of sitting around. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was found naked on a roundabout, <laughs> you know. 
I'm grand now. Who wasn't? <laughs> exactly. Wasn't? We've all been there. We've all, we've all been there. You yeah. must you must be really good at the audience interaction stuff because you've done so many you've done so many things before and even Electric Picnic a few years ago where you're literally bouncing off people with a microphone in their face so you have to think on your toes. Yeah, I think it comes from especially the festivals. I mean, I remember I was at Castle Palooza two years ago where a white lad with dreadlocks had the gumption to heckle me. And I'm like, but you're a white fella with dreadlocks. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. This is a one big glass house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's almost like he was like, please make fun of me, please. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely doing the festivals has helped me in regards to like uh, interacting with the crowd. But like, I'm not like I I'm not I don't I don't want people to go. Oh, don't want to go now in case she picks on me or <laughs> like that. I'm just saying I pick on no one unless they come to me. Do you know what I mean? I'm like a jujitsu. Black belt. I'm not <laughs> looking for trouble, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> you will only go against other black belts like that. No, it. no. But if I'm eating chips and nabbing at 2am and you come up to me starting on me, but <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to end well. It's not going to end well. I'll probably end up in court. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do you ever do you ever get any material from the from the podcast? You obviously the Alice's Pittle Show the podcast. Oh, the that's time. really popular. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love doing it. I I do because like what I do is like I interview people and then I talk about myself loads. <laughs> uh, and I uh, there's definitely bits. I'm even writing a play out of a bit that I talked about. That's on amazing. The Pittle Show. Yeah. So it just bled from a conversation that you it had. It bled from a conversation I had. Yeah. So I'm like I'm like at the moment writing it now and like. Uh, yeah, and that was with Maureen O'Connell. I was chatting away to her. And I love I love chatting to, like, especially, you know, like, uh, people that are Irish and kind of in the public eye. You know, you might think, oh, it's very, they're very glamorous now, but you know they were drinking cans when they were 15 behind, like, a community centre. The right of passion. And yeah. I just want to hear about that. Like, those are the stories I want to hear about. Or, um, yeah, so I'm kind of, like, I've just moved to London, so I'm getting more kind of, like, London-y people, but I miss... I miss kind of like having the references of, you know, a handball alley. Yeah. Or <laughs> they don't know what handball is over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's mad, isn't it? It's only what an hour away on a plane, but the difference between, there is a cultural difference. There's like. a massive cultural difference. My dad is English and like, um, like so half my family are English, but there is a massive cultural difference. Um, I mean, you know, especially with Brexit now, like my dad voted for Brexit. Um, and I think that's like a really roundabout way of trying to get out of paying child maintenance. But <laughs> <laughs> that's a unique insight to Brexit as well, isn't I it? I tell him that Not all the time. Not many comedians are going to say that on stage as well. <laughs> yeah. This is the American version. My dad voted for Trump and you're like, no, exactly what your dad like. Yeah, Judgment yeah, yeah. straight Judgment. away. Judgment. No, but uh, um, yeah, I used to do loads of material about my dad. Uh, How did he feel about that? Was he the one that was heckling you in Vicar Street? No, no, but he he saw so he saw my TV show, and uh, uh, in the TV show he's like, "I know that character's based on you." <laughs> he goes to me, and in the TV show I referenced that my dad. I joked that my dad might be dead, and he's like, "I was very hurt by that." And I was like, "It's not you, Dad. It's a joke." <laughs> do you know what I mean? And even do you know what's funny? Um, so. My the, no characters are really based on people. You have to say that legally. Legally, legally, nobody's based on anybody. But uh, in the last episode of Nowhere Fast, a lad gets his finger chopped off, and the lad that I based that on got his thumb chopped off last week. Oh no! But the same way uh, as in the you're like the Simpsons. You're I like know. The Simpsons. I'm like, like a psychic. Predicts everything. Like. I predict everything. Well, now I could have definitely predicted with him that somehow a finger would be chopped off. <laughs> That's very specific. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he's got a back door. Like, he's, he's got a. Did you sew it back on? Sew it on. He kind of gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> It was like having your own show on RT as well because like, you, you it created great. it and you're in it. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And I loved all the actors and it was kind of mad like waking up every morning. You had to get up at like five in the morning, hop in a minibus and there'd be about four people in the minibus <laughs> and you'd be brought to, it felt like you were going to a very exclusive school. <laughs> and <laughs> This is really posh. Does yeah, really posh. Yeah. And uh, you get a breakfast roll in the morning, you get your makeup done, your hair done. I'd be eating away at the breakfast roll. It was luxury. <laughs> you get used to that. It's very hard work actually, <laughs> for the rest of it. But I remember the good times, which is the breakfast roll. Uh, <laughs> but I, I loved it. It was so much fun. It was so class to kind of like look at people setting up cameras. And we had a great like cinematographer and uh, 
it's mad to go, he's doing it. He has this job because I wrote it. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. And, and like, uh, even like the costume, like, so this necklace is from, I, I got this from Nowhere Fast. I got loads of little bits from Nowhere Fast, legally, by the way. Did not. I asked them. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, like uh, Susan, who did the costume, and, like she put so much thought into the costume itself. So it was kind of mad every day to meet all these great creative people and yeah. the actors. Like I, I love Genevieve and I love Claire and I, lo- I love all of them. But, you know, they're, they're my little babies. Yeah. And uh, every time they do a play, or like Claire's doing incredible, and so is Genevieve. They're doing incredibly well. They're like my children now. I'm like, go, go conquer the world. Yeah, because you, know? you feel Brilliant. like you've had a say and not, not necessarily a star for them, but something kind of cool and creative that you did early on. And it's kind of like, because I, I, we used to, like Genevieve used to cook a chicken every week and then we'd go for our script and learn it. So, and they were so patient with me because I'm not a trained actor. So like but you're I'm all a, to the boss as well, really. See, that's uh, the thing. <laughs> but it's so bad because sometimes <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be reading my own script going, girls, what emotion am I supposed to convey with this? <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote it. But I trust them more than I would me, you know. And uh, so it, it was really, really good crack uh, to do. And I'm proud of it as well. Like, I, I, I think it was good. Do you know, I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you've got a crew of people there working, and they're working for you, really, they're working for your yeah. vision. Mm. Did you, was there any pressure then? Because I, was like, I think it was Brian Cranston or something that said that years ago. On Breaking Bad, he would always feel his mood dictated the day. So we always tried to be in good form oh, with yeah. people on the set because it reverberated throughout the day. And we have to be in good form because like those people uh, have come together to, to, make, to make your vision. And like they're very talented and they could have worked on something else but they decided to work for your thing. So you got to be, you got to be thankful every day you wake up that like you're doing a job you love and these people are helping you create your vision. So it's never like, even like the makeup artists and and, and like hairdressers, sometimes they could tell I was stressed and they were like, don't worry, we're going to take an extra 10 minutes doing your hair now and you just calm yourself down. So I would like, and they'd be, it, it was like a symbiotic kind of relationship where if you could tell anyone was under pressure, you did stuff to try and help them, you know? That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you imagine that? I mean, I mean I've never experienced that anywhere else, but that's one of those things as well that just seems really Irish. You can just imagine this makeup artist going, God, yeah. give yourself 10 minutes there, I'll say yeah. you're taking Do you want a bit the <laughs> and I gave up before but then I was like straight up <laughs> yeah, I'm stressed <laughs> yeah. I have my own show yeah exactly and like it, like not to like talk about cigarettes in a good way but like you're left alone yeah do you know because no one wants to go near someone even if you don't smoke you, you just stand there and hold it <laughs> yeah, like, yeah just in your own smell <laughs> just you know, keep away <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah there's like a bond as well like uh, like Adele did my makeup and if uh, any time like if you're ever doing that and they're like do you know anyone that's good at makeup I'm like Adele yeah Adele's class so yeah there's always and like even, most of the makeup artists most of them are freelance yeah, yeah 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 and like she did a great job do you know there's no one else I'd want doing my makeup than her mm. and or even like if I get to do other stuff now hopefully and cast people like I to- if I could if I could get all of the cast in order fast and make another thing I would you know and pop them in and go hey let's we're that's having what, a great time yeah. What, yeah but that's why you see so many people working together again and again whatever it is yeah. because they trust them and it's yeah. like on a, on a set as well like you said they're long days I mean you get the breakfast roll and the makeup and all like that done but they're yeah. long days everybody has to get on right such long days and like and I know this sounds like such a like politician's way of talking no one not one person on Nowhere Fast was in any way, like, I'm trying to think of a word that's not a swear word. <laughs> you can swear, it's fine, it's a podcast. No one's a prick, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and on set, no one, like, not even a touch of it. It was, uh, do you know, sometimes you can tell people are nice, but you sense it. Yeah. You know, there's a smell of prick off them, you know. <laughs> like a I smell don't want to be 30, I'm 30 an hour day next to them, like, just, <laughs> you had to be gone. Yeah, yeah, but there was, that was n- not the case with, with that at all. So, like, I... I just, I can't speak highly enough of the people that worked on Overfast. And how are you finding then the, the transition to London? Because there's mm. only so much you can do in Ireland and you're doing a nationwide tour. You've done an RTE series. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it was just a natural transition then to go over there. It was. It was kind of like, do you know what? It came after I did my first Vicar Street and I sat there and I got, I got a bottle of Prosecco off the venue, which my family drunk before I could even get near <laughs> it, by the way. And I was sitting there looking in the mirror and I was like, 
this is the happiest day of my life. This is what I wanted my whole life. Oh, and well, let's not lie. Since I started doing comedy, this is what I wanted to do was Vicar Street. And I sat there looking into the mirror and I was like, that's it now. What now? Do you know? And I was like, right, give it a go in London and uh, see how you get on. And like, but the thing is, I miss Ireland. Vicar Street's my favourite type of gig to do I'm doing a tour and I just can't wait to get back and do the tour it's mad how going away and I'm like I oh, can't wait to be in Dolan's <laughs> in Limerick or whatever um, and kind of like I just want to give it a go now and if it doesn't work I gave it a go you know I just uh, it's weird how you kind of get scared you kind of go well if I fail then other people will see me fail and do you know they'll be like oh look at her she thought she was good enough to do London and now <laughs> back now like <laughs> um, but yeah, I did. Mm. I did think I was good enough to do London. And if I'm not, that's fine. And yeah. if I am, whatever. Life, I I just trying to not, not live my life where I care about what other people think of me. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. as well that it's like... Which is weird for a comedian. Yeah, but it's how, <laughs> well, but it's how do you gauge success as Ooh. well? Like, how would you gauge your success? Like, two shows in Vicar Street <laughs> seems to be pretty successful to me. And like you said, that's a bar for any Irish comedian because Tommy Tiernan and Dara Breen and yeah. whoever, Deirdre Crane, whoever else has done that venue on a consistent basis, you're like... Yeah. Well, this is this. Like, where do I, where do I kind of go from here? And like, you know, if it all, if if the arse falls out of it, like, I can go to my grandkids in like sixty years time. Like, I did Vicar Street once, and they're like, "What is Vicar Street?" <laughs> <laughs> I was fully professional yeah. for a living. Yeah, and I was a stand up comedian. They're like, "What's a stand up comedian?" <laughs> There's no. We all just have hoverboards now, <laughs> or whatever, and they get entertainment injected into their veins. Uh, just it's just a feeling. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but at least at least I gave it a go. You know, I I think now, I think before I cared about what success looked like, and uh, now I'm kind of now I'm kind of going look that caring is not going to get you anywhere. It's going to yeah, be a case probably as well as enjoying it. That's going to hit at a certain point where you're going to be like, right, well, once people are buying tickets, I think, yeah. to your show, yeah, that has to be where you're like, right, well, I have an audience now. I can kind of do what I like now. It's crazy. Or even rich people, like, yeah, you'd, like last Vicar Street, like oh, I have a picture of a woman that had like a, she had like a sign with a picture of my face and said, go on, Alison. I felt like I was in Westlife. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it was one woman. <laughs> she made a sign, She's though. She's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, like, you know, there's not many people to get that in life. And and also, I I just remember coming off stage and the adrenaline was going... I, I listened back to the gig. I recorded it on my phone. A lot of comedians do that, don't they? Yeah. They throw the phone on the stool All or the whatever. Time. Yeah. Because... Like, you know, if you come, I always go, well, if I come up with a fresh new joke on stage, I could use it the next day. And then I use it. And then it's like, nah, it's not that fresh. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I record, I record all my gigs. And sometimes, like, uh, I'll, I'll listen to them just to remind myself of why I like doing comedy. Like, sometimes, I notice, like, sometimes if I'm having a bad day, um, I listen to my Ficker Street gig and go, well, you did that. Yeah. And, you know. And you didn't do that punchline right. You let down Vicker Street, you know. Are you still, would you still be really self-critical? All the time. As well? Yeah. I think that's like my biggest, if we're going to get psychologically into it. Uh, let's delve. <laughs> let's get into the delve. So talk about your childhood. <laughs> From the start. <laughs> yeah. As early as you can remember. Uh, do you want the earliest memory I have? Sure. Go, Go on. Uh, waking up in London. Uh, I, was born in, I was born in London. And I was drinking a bottle, but I was able to walk. And I had My Little Pony wallpaper and Care Bears uh, bedding. Do you remember the Care Bears? Yeah, I do. Simpler times, huh? It's mad. I had a friend, so I lived in a block of flats and I had a friend named Danielle across the hallway. And uh, I named my first sister after my friend. <laughs> yeah, my mum, because my mum was worried I'd be jealous of my new sister. She like, you can name it anything you like. And I was like, I'm going to call her Danielle after my friend, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like a 20, there's like a 29 year old in London there at the moment that's like not knowing that she's the namesake of my sister. That was sister. really smart from your mum though. That's why yeah. people would see that idea and as well be like, look, they can call the kid wherever, it doesn't matter. People make up names at this stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and I, I spelt it a weird way. She's got nine letters in her name. So <laughs> you spelled it and everything. I spelt it as well. I How insisted. Old were you at this stage? I was about I'd say about five. I'd say about five. 
I, it's a lot of responsibility for yeah, a five-year-old. I have to say, I wasn't drinking the bottle at five. That's the earliest <laughs> memory I have. Right? I left that a long time ago. <laughs> it's a different bottle now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a different woman. I'm post-bottle. You know, it's been one thousand days since my last bottle. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so yeah, what are we talking about there? Sorry, I went on a... <laughs> we deep dive into your childhood, childhood there. Childhood, yeah. Kind of on the side. So, um, I think podcasting is really interesting now because that's, mm. that's what this is, right? And it's yeah. something similar to what you do as well. But you do it in front of a live audience a lot, right? Yeah, I try to do it in front of a live audience mostly. That must be helpful for you being a comedian as well, just to gauge reactions and stuff. Exactly, and I love, I love interviewing comedians in front of audiences. Like, uh, like I had John McNally in front of an audience. I had Mattress Mick. Mattress Sorry, Mick I hilarious. had Mattress Isn't Mick. It? it sounds like exclusive uh, affair. Uh, <laughs> I'll have him again. <laughs> Click me, that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> got a few free mattresses. <laughs> I did not. He wouldn't even give you a discount if you're joking. I know, can you believe that? So he's like, <laughs> a Savvy's a savvy businessman. He's too savvy a businessman for that now. Exactly. Um, no, uh, I interviewed Mattress Mick in front of like a live audience and he was lovely. Yeah. And uh, But it's mad how him being in front of a live audience made him uh, be funnier. Like he's, he's a showman. Off, he's feeding off the audience. Yeah, yeah, and he's like he's like he's a he's a very witty guy, do you know? So he he knew and he was doing loads of bits and it was really good. So I loved doing it in front of audiences. Even I did um Colin McGorman in Body and Soul and we had the best of crack about the grimmest of subjects, do you know? And he was putting in jokes. It was I love doing it in front of an audience. It's my favourite thing. It does add a different element. Do you ever go in your head, I can't say that? Or are you ever like, I mean, obviously you know where the line is. like. But are you ever yeah. like, that might be pushing it a bit too far? or Because it's a weird climate nowadays. Totally. But yeah. like, you know, if I do go too far, I have an editor, Sarah Garvey. <laughs> Click, gone. It's very good. Um, that didn't happen at all. Yeah, I never yeah, said yeah. that. Scene redacted. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, there's a line, but, you know, that's the joy of doing comedy anyway is there's it's an adrenaline rush for a reason because things can go wrong and like to be honest with you I'm in no state to climb a mountain or to do like cave diving for adrenaline so the best thing I can do is stand-up comedy I think stand-up comedy is scarier than any of that thank you I'm very brave <laughs> it is. It is. it's terrifying like. is I, it? well public speaking is a, is a huge thing for a lot of people you yeah. know where you have to stand in front of people but as a comedian the added weight is you have to bleed, make them laugh as well. It's not just proficiently talk to this audience. You need That's to get some true. laughs. That's true. That's true. And then you can't control the audience either. You know, you don't know what certain night it is. If it's a Tuesday, it could be different on a Friday. If it's a yeah, but the longer you go, the more you have in your toolbox. So you're kind of grand. Like uh, when you say control the audience, I feel like you know it's like a riot police or something. <laughs> 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 Start laughing at it. Yeah, exactly. I got tear gas. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's kind of like. Uh, you, you control the it's it's an interesting kind of puzzle for you to do as a as a comedian yeah to kind of figure it out like if you get if you get a white lad with dreadlocks who heckles you you just uh it's mad how you, there's the language around comedy is so violent you say like i killed <laughs> i murdered them yeah. you know or i died on my hole or <laughs> uh what do i say about a comedian uh, like if I, an audience member it's, uh, I neutralized the, the friend. <laughs> so if I can see someone and he's, uh, he or she's a bit yippy, I'm like, even in uh, Electric Picnic, there's a woman that stood up to say something and I was in the middle of a joke about sit down. <laughs> and she sat down. <laughs> the power. The I power, know, right? yeah. I, I was like, wow, this is, yeah, I get off on the power. I do it for the power. So. Uh, yeah. And how are you handling, I suppose, been recognised? How you handling, like, do you get people coming up to you on the street a lot? Is it like, you know, yeah. from the shows or from the stand-up or wherever it is? I, Electric Picnic was the first time that I properly kind of like, uh, it's mad. I gave two people my phone number because I didn't know how to like, I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, great. Uh, do you want my number? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think you knew them? Like if that, when you kind of, no. when you're new, when you're kind of getting recognised for the first time, where you're like, yeah. they must know me. So you're like, oh, you're looking great. And they're like, who the... Yeah, totally. Or or what I my favorite thing is like people coming up to me going, My boyfriend knows you, but I don't know you. Who are you? And I'm like, I'm a threat to your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's what Watch I'm your back. Like, Watch your back, Alison Town. I'm his new girlfriend. <laughs> 
That could be the name of the next show. That could be the name of the next hour that you I'm do. I'm his new girlfriend. I'm his new girlfriend. I, that's, watch, there's a warning to everybody that's coming to the show. <laughs> watch your back. Mass seduction for Madison Smith. <laughs> And with mass seduction of me would just be, how are you? Uh, <laughs> what's your star sign? <laughs> That's not a bad line, to be fair. Like, yeah, I yeah. It, works, it, it is good. Yeah, what's your star sign? Aries. Oh, nice. Now you're seduced. There, there we go. go. Perfect. Work, boom, done. Boom. You didn't, it was very quick. You couldn't <laughs> see it to the camera. But <laughs> uh, would, you like, would you like to do another series? Would you like to do another I show? I'd love to do another because series. That, you're mixing it up then, right? Like That's the dream, to be able to do something creative like that, to be able to perform in front of a, a yeah. bunch of people at night time. Well, I kind of discovered, like, I love writing and I love acting. And like even even last year, um, Maeve Higgins has got a new film coming out um, with like Will Forte from America. Uh, Saturday Night Live, he's I deadly. I know, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's a deadly film directed by these uh, a pair of lads called Daddy. And... Uh, <laughs> Or it might be D-A-D-D-Y. I, anyway, I call him Daddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> to me, they're Daddy. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's coming out next year and I love to acting on that. And uh, there's loads of bits and mobs I like acting on and I'm trying to write. So I'm writing a play at the moment and that's going to be out in February. And uh, um, There's a lot, there's, that's a lot going on, right? Because you yeah. just have to finish the, the hour as well. But that changes night to night as well, I was saying. This, but. Yeah, and that's the great thing about being in London is there's so many gigs that I'm kind of like trying out new materials. Now, I don't want to come to Ireland and just do a load of jokes about living in London. Because yeah. like, if you live in Dundalk, you could not give a hoop about what's going on in Ca- Waitrose or whatever. Do you know, from London, not... you were Well, I was actually yeah. born there, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you born in Kilburn? No, no, I was, I was oh, doing yeah. for... County Kilburn. It was you for a second there. I was in character Very for nice. a second. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of trying to write and trying to keep it. It's it's a it's an interesting challenge. It's a, it's a discipline though, right? To totally. get up every day and be like, right. I know what I suppose there's nothing more terrifying than I need to do this in front of people. Totally, totally. So that's what's making me do it because look, the dates aren't going to change, so I have to I have to get my stuff done, and I'm excited. And so is there a place you're looking forward to going? I suppose more than anywhere else is it back to Vicker Street. Vicker Street, yeah. Vicker Street. Because it starts in Carlow, right? Starts in Carlow and then Galway. Um, I'm very excited about doing Galway. Um, and I'm doing a gig in Mullingar, uh, which is like near my hometown. And a part of me is like, what are you at? You're have, just... Have you, have you done gigs in your hometown before? I did a gig in Moat, which is like the nearest. I mean, look, if I did a gig in my hometown, it, it's the church is the venue, you know, so I'll have to become a priest. <laughs> To, to, to hold the most people yeah exactly yeah. get the audience in <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah I, I'm doing Mullingar this year I did Moat last year but I'm going to do Mullingar and uh, I'm kind of nervous about it because like you know I it's weird how I don't get nervous in front of audiences but I would get nervous if like if like my ex English teacher was in there you know because I just want to go come on now I'm doing uh, tell me I'm doing well Mrs Flanagan <laughs> you know <laughs> Tell me you're proud of me, please. If, you know? if, I think if Mrs. Flanagan bought a ticket to see you, you're doing well, right? Yeah, I, I hope like, so. Um, it's it's mad, because my like going back to my dad, but it's funny. Like I was chatting to him about comedy, and I go, "Did you, did, did you like the TV show I did?" And he goes, "Well, it's not really aimed at me, Alison." <laughs> And I sat down and was like, everything's aimed at you, Daddy. That's the- <laughs> It's all about you. Yeah, exactly. You this whole already. career. Uh, so, like, it's it's mad how I get nervous about individuals, but not about crowds. Yeah, well, so. I mean, if you weren't getting nervous over a home over your hometown and your first proper time playing your hometown, yeah. it would be, you know, be weird. I know. I'm kind of like, I wonder what I'll do. Well, I just, I could do a whole Westmead-based hour-long show because... Uh, it's a mad place, <laughs> you know. I could uh, consider maybe doing that for Mullingar. Just, just actual like I could point to people in the crowd and go, "That's you, that's you." <laughs> <laughs> that's very specific jokes that each yeah. person in the crowd. Yeah, very specific. You can like because there's a lad called Millie Walsh in uh, Mullingar, and he's like a local legend. He does. Uh, he owns the local garage, and. Uh, Anytime you drive in, he goes, Whoa, how are you? And throws water onto your windscreen and cleans it, you know. So That's a very specific joke to It's not a very specific yeah. joke. That's too too specific a reference. Like <laughs> For anywhere for else. For anywhere else, only Mullingar. <laughs> so could could do that. Yeah, just a lot of mini Walsh jokes. Well, congratulations on all your success as well. It's deadly seeing the dates and yeah. uh, all the dates that you're doing around the country and then finishing in Vicker Street as well. And and thanks Mill for coming in, Alison. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted to be here.